Hey guys, this is Jody back with you. I just want to do this video. Uh, the weather's been pretty bad. I haven't been really able to get out and do any digging and what I have been able to do, I've come up empty. So I just want to make a video on how I clean my artifacts, both metal and non-ferrous metal, such as coins and brass and copper. So uh, without further ado, let's get started, guys. This right here, what you see is the axe heads that I found and a couple of the uh, hatchet heads that I found and the horseshoe. And in one of my recent videos, I found this iron. And also, this is a lock that I found some time back. And this is a big spike that I found. And this is all stuff that I've cleaned up, guys. And I've done most of this with uh, electrolysis. And I know there's lots of videos out on how to do electrolysis, but I just want to share it with you guys and show you how I clean up my stuff and what I do to keep it preserved. Yeah. This is going to be the metal stuff that I've demonstrated. And also, uh, panning over here, I've got this. These are my, my tanks that I use, guys. And this big tank here is just an old uh, drawer out of an old plastic uh like a file cabinet, like a keeper cabinet. That's what I do my larger metal items in. And this little container here is what I do my coins in, which is just a Ziploc container. And I've got some coins here for demonstration. And as you can see down in the water here, I have uh, the really big horseshoe that I found. And the way this works, guys, is I was fortunate enough to uh, obtain this power supply from the... Uh, employer that I work for and this is a 50 amp and it goes all the way up to 15 volts DC what most people use is just the old car uh, battery chargers or 12 volt or 6 volt that's what I use for my big iron parts but for my coins all I done guys was took a, an old uh, battery charger from an old cell phone that I had just uh Cut the plug off that went into the phone. Determined what was positive and what was negative, and then I put some alligator clips on. You see here, got my positive on what's called the anode, and this is the negative which hooks to the item that you want to clean. And on this one, I done the same. I've got my anode that I use is just a big piece of iron that I had that a friend of mine gave to me, and I put a bolt through it so I'd have something good to. Uh, put my positive lead on this piece of PVC pipe I use here to if I want to hang an item I can hang it off into the water this here is where my negative line hooks and then I've got a little short uh, strip here that I can hook numerous amounts of wires to as you can see in here I've got two, two leads hooked to this horseshoe and I don't know if that's going to help any because I just set this up today with this power uh, strip not a, it's not a power strip it's just different leads that I can hook wires to but I'm gonna turn this on and pan down here I'm gonna flip the switch on my power supply and as you see I've got it on about 12 volts and the amperage I've got set up about a quarter of the way so if we go up to here you can automatically see this and I'm going to use this flashlight if I can get it just right to where you guys can see what's going on down in here hopefully you can see the bubbles coming off of this lead and they will see them you can see them starting to come up off of the, the horseshoe itself and what that's doing guys is it's breaking up that rust and how this works is the anode the reason it's hooked backwards you got your positive on the anode and your negative on your item you're trying to clean. What that does is when you hook your positive to your anode, it draws that rust to that item, to that anode, whatever it may be, away from the item over to that anode so it collects the rust. And what this will do, guys, this will, uh, over time, I leave these larger items in here for about 24 hours. 
And then when I pull this out, what I'll be able to do is you see the big uh, pieces of rust, it'll come right off. I mean, it'll knock right off with a small hammer. And all I use, guys, to do that with is this hammer right here, if it's in here. I don't see it in here, but I got a little small tack hammer, and that's all I use that for is to just to knock that off. Knock that stuff off. Let's see if we can get a shot from here. I don't know if we can see it. The bubbles are... Nah, it's really not very clear, guys. But anyway, you get an idea of how that works now. You can see the bubbles coming off. And it's cleaning it is what it's doing. And the overnight, like in the morning, Lord willing, this water will be rust color. And from where that's doing its job. And this is not just water, guys. I forgot to put this part in. This is what I put in it. Just arm and hammer baking soda. And then this particular mix here, I've got about, I don't know, three tablespoons in this. And I just use cold water for my iron objects. And uh, for my coins, I do warm the water up, but this has been sitting a little while and it's probably already gotten cold. But I'm gonna do this, guys. I'm gonna show you these examples that I have here. This is a barber quarter that I found some time back. And if you'll go back through my videos, you'll see this. And this thing was pretty bad shape. You see, it's 1898. Especially on the back here, it was stained really dark and bad. But after putting it through this electrolysis, you can see that this coin looks really good guys I mean it cleaned up really well also this is the barber dime that I found and I've got some comparison photos I'm gonna put up at the end of the video guys to compare the way they were when I found them and what they look like now but this is a 1907 barber dime and it it was black I mean it was in bad shape and look at it now I mean it looks really good the detail is awesome on the back. And for comparison, I got these. I had these in my collection, guys. I didn't find these coins right here, this Merc Dime. I did find the Barber, but I didn't find the Merc Dime. It was a, something that my dad had given me years ago. But look at the difference in that. See how dirty that Merc Dime is? It's a 1942 Merc Dime. I mean, it's dirty. And also, I've got a... Uh, Just a regular dime here. It's also a silver from 62. It's pretty dirty too. I'm gonna clean these up. And we're gonna, this is the Indian head that I found. I mean, it was totally green. You can still see some of the green on them, but the whole thing was green when I found it. It's a 1902. The whole thing was green when I found it. And it, it was really bad, and, and it didn't all come off the back, as you can see, but it come fairly clean compared to what it was, guys. It was really bad, but this silver, man, it comes out just awesome. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add my baking soda to this mixture, this water that I have here, guys. Not too much, because it's not very much water. That should be plenty right there and then I've got these these little wooden sticks that my wife had bought for something I'm not even sure what they're for and I'm gonna mix that up as best as I can just to dissolve it in the water and I'm gonna take this Merc dime to start off with this thing is bent and I don't know what happened to it guys but my dad gave me these a long time ago. He's been dead since 2000, but this thing's got a really bad bend in it. I hope you guys can see that. It dips down in the middle, it's in pretty bad shape. We're gonna clean it up. That's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna lay this down here and I'm gonna take my, take my negative lead here, guys, that I have. All you gotta do is take this alligator clip and just just grab a hold of it like that. That's all you gotta do. Got my my positive hook to the anode, which I use this little measuring 
spoon that I had. And all I'm gonna do is drop this coin in the water. Like so. Just place it right down in the water. And this is already plugged in the outlet. And we should, it'll take a, a few seconds on this. And then the bubbles will start coming. Check this uh, horseshoe out, guy. I mean, it's bubbling like nobody's business. Look at that. See the bubbles coming off? That's the cleaning process. I'm not sure why this lead's not producing any. I'm gonna have to check that one out. But seems like all this, all the draws coming from this side. I mean, it's bubbling like crazy, which is a good thing. That means it's working. That's how electrolysis works. This right here should start bubbling at any time. Hopefully we can get some views of this coin. All right, there we go. You can see the bubbles coming, guys. You see the bubbles starting to work. You'll see them on the anode and on the coin. Try and get the coin to focus in. See the bubbles coming? It's cleaning. So what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna let this sit in here for probably 15 minutes. I'm not gonna hold you guys on here that long. But then what we'll do after that is take this little cup here, put some baking soda in it, not too much. And what we're gonna do is make it a little paste with this white distilled vinegar. I've got this in a dispenser my friend gave me. He, he uses uh, those vape liquids and he gives me his bottles when he gets finished. But it don't take much and there's a reaction when you put this stuff together, it bubbles. But when the time comes to do that, we'll show it to you. We'll look over some of this stuff. I found this lock, guys, it was in bad shape. Bad shape. I've got a before and after for it too. And I've got the iron that I found and all these axe heads. This right here is a really cool hatchet head, guys, from the 40s. Really like it. I've got some stuff here that I found that before I started doing my videos. This is some great seal buttons that I found. This I'm pretty sure is a WW2 and this is a WW1, a small one. This right here is just a, that's a US lapel or a hat button from WW2. And this right here is a pretty special find to me, guys. And when I found it, I didn't know what it was. I did video it when I found it. But I just got my stuff out the other day. And after I learned this about this electrolysis and started cleaning this stuff up. Cleaned this thing up. And, and you can see the manufacturer right there. It's Raw, R-A-U, Fastener Company. We all got researching. And I'll post a couple photos at the end of this video. But this right here, guys, is off a chin strap of an M1 airborne helmet from World War II. That right there is something really cool. And my son loves the, uh, the Army history, so I gave all that stuff to him. I just borrowed it back from him for to be able to shoot this video. But this button here is pretty bad too. I'm gonna try to clean it up before I give this stuff back to him. That one was in awesome shape when I when I found it. It was pretty pristine already. I mean, look at that thing is great. And this one right here, it's pretty dirty. Pretty dirty, but I can clean it up with this electrolysis, no problem, guys. I'm going to do all these little buckles here and these two things here that I found. Pretty sure this right here, found this a while back. I'm pretty sure it's a handle off of a razor. One of the old razors that took uh, the blades. But this, I'm not sure what this is. It's pretty cool, though. Looks almost like a chest piece, don't it? Pretty cool, though. And all these little neat buckles that I found. I like finding buckles, guys. This is off of a watch band that I found recently and it was the band was leather but it was 
pretty bad shape. It was just half of it. So I just took it off. And these other ones I just found the way you see them there. But anyway, we'll uh, turn the camera off. And as soon as this dime gets through cooking over here, we'll turn, uh, we'll show you how to finish this off. As you can see, guys, it's, it's cooking away. There we go. It's cooking away. Look at that. We'll give her 15 minutes, and we'll come back and check it out, guys. Stay with me, because at the end of this video, I'm doing the drawing for the prizes. So uh, stick around and don't want to miss that. Be back in a few. Okay, guys, I'm back. It's time to uh, pull this Merc Dime out of here. First of all, we're going to do this before I get ahead of myself. I'm going to take the vinegar, and I, I marked that, that bottle just so people would, you know, people in my household would know what was in it. And if I can get the lid off, <laughs> these childproof lids are hard for adults sometimes. All right, I got the lid off. Remember how I told you there's a reaction when you apply this? You're about to see that. So I've got a little bit of my dropper here. Just going to drop this vinegar into the baking soda. You see, and probably even hear the reaction. Don't want to put too much in there because I want this to be like a paste. Don't want it to be real thin. I want it to be pasty like. To where we can actually. See, I might have to add a little bit more baking soda. It got too thin on me. I want it to be like a paste. There we go. You guys can see the consistency of that. It's more like a paste. It's not too too runny because we don't want it to be that way. But there we go with that. Okay. Just come over here. All you got to do, guys, you don't have to unplug it. You're not going to get shocked if you stick your finger in the water. All you got to do is just pull your lead out and there's the coin and we'll drop it right here where we picked it up and just attach that lead to the plastic so it's not hanging in the water bring our Merc dime over here you can see what it looks like and all I'm going to do guys is take this little stick thing I don't know what this is called I apologize and put some of this on here like so and I'm just going to get some on my finger as well. Just put this between my fingers and rub it like this. I mean, it's simple as that. Just rub it pretty good. Around. You may have to do it a couple times. But this process works. Trust me, I promise. It really does. I mean, you can already see the difference. It's amazing. It don't take very long at all. And the results are crazy. Okay, after doing that, I'm going to take this dime back over here to the water. And just rinse it off. Sorry about the focusing issues, guys. Just going to dry it off on my little rag here. And check this out, guys. Now look at this Smirk Dime compared to what it looked like before. Is that not cool? I mean, that's, that's amazing results. It doesn't damage the silver. This thing was in bad shape already. It doesn't damage the silver at all. And just brings it to the light. You can see the true colors shining through, you might say. But that's how well it cleans it up. I mean, that's pretty amazing. I'll, I'll put it next to this rosy dime and show you. I showed you both of these before we even started this. 
I'm sorry about the shadow, you guys, but let me hold them in my hand here. Look at this, the difference in these. It's amazing what that electrolysis does. You see how black that dime is? And you remember this Merc dime was just as bad. Or not just as bad, but it was pretty bad. See the difference? I mean, it's it's unreal what it does. And it'll do that for copper as well. You just got to keep an eye on the copper. But, you know, some people like this look to where it shows the highs and lows with the tarnish. But, you know, if you like it super clean, you can determine that by the time you leave it in there, guys. I mean, that's how you do that. You just leave it in there a less amount of time and it won't come as clean. I mean, that's how you determine that, the patina you want on your coin. But, yeah, that thing is, like, super clean now. Look at that. I mean, it's stupid clean. Check it out. There's the Merc Dime, the Barber Dime, and the Barber Quarter. And here's old Dirty Rosie. I'm going to wait to put him in later. I just want to show you guys that Merc Dime for demonstration purposes. But check out the water with the horseshoe now. It's already turned pretty nasty. I'll grab my flashlight and we'll see. It's still bubbling like crazy. This side is still not. We'll have to figure out why. But the way to tell this is, this is working, guys, when your water gets really dirty and you can't see the bubbles, the water will actually move on the top when the film... Uh, gathers on it, the water will actually start swirling around because of the movement from the bubbles. So that's really cool. Something else I forgot to tell you guys was this stuff don't come out like this. This color. Because oxidation sets up as soon as you pull it out of that water. And what you gotta do, well, this is how I do it. I take this item, say this axe head right here, when I pull it out I'll take it and brush as much of the rust off as I can with the little wire brush that I have. Pop it in the oven at 200 degrees. Let all the water evaporate out of that item. As soon as I get it out, I take this. I use mineral oil. And I just take this rag and I rub it down. That's what I've done to all this stuff is rubbed it down with mineral oil. Now with the mineral oil, you have to, over time, it, uh, you'll have to reapply some people use wax you can use clear wax and that's pretty permanent some people always also use like a clear lacquer to cover it with anything that's a moisture barrier will work but when you use something like this oil you have to keep reapplying that over time so you got to keep a, a lookout on your items because the rust eventually will start coming back through see this one here i need to wipe down again and pour some on the inside of here but yeah that's called electrolysis, guys. I hope you liked this video, and I hope my demonstrations were clear enough. If anybody has any questions, you can feel free to comment or, or to ask. Or if you have any suggestions on something I could do better, let me know. You know, I'm always up for learning and always up for, you know, figuring out how to do things better. But here's the prizes, guys, as we're moving on. Here's the prizes. You got first place, second place, and third place. And... I've got 13 people down on my list. These are the people that signed up. And if you don't see your name or your channel here, guys, it's because I couldn't find you as a subscriber to my channel. And I apologize for that, but I'm pretty sure I made the rules clear. And I've got 13 people down in the order that that I got them on the channel saying I want in. So I've got... Dog is my co-pirate, Yard Dogs, Darnell Williams, Hello World, Digging at Five, Chief Kirk, Treasure Hunting, Southwest PA, Backyard Custom Knives, Kevin Croker, Dirty Dog Diggers, H Ghost, Pamela Chadwell, TNK, Artifact Addiction, and Daniel Murphy. And without further ado, guys, I've got my wife's phone here. And I downloaded a number generator, which is right here. And this is how we're going to do this. Let me put this up here. 
beside the numbers this is going to be pretty plain and and uh, right to the point but here's what we got so the first drawing I'll show you down here I've got 13 people right here you can put in how many numbers you have between 1 and 13 that's what I put and this app will not repeat we can go up here And I know there's a way you can set this to where it does not repeat. Here we go. It says avoid repeats right there. And I have clicked that button. So now, without further ado, let's draw for the third place, which will be these three mind tags right here, guys. That's your third place winner. So let's draw for that. And we'll hit our first one and see who the winner is. Nine. Number nine. Dirty Dog Diggers will be the winner of the mind tags. Guys, that'll be our third place winner is Dirty Dog Diggers. She's the winner of the mind tags. Congratulations, Dirty Dog Diggers. All right. Prize number two, which is the copper snake that I forged. That'll be the number two winner. So here we go. Let's pick number two, the winner for the second prize. Ten. Number 10, H Ghost will be the winner of the number, th number two prize, which is the copper snake that we forged. And the first, pl first place prize will be the trowel or the digging knife, as some people say, and the, the custom sheath. That I made with that. So that'll be our first place winner. And here we go. Three. Number three. Darnell Hello World Williams. He won the first place prize, which is the custom trial that we made. And again, guys, congratulations to all the winners. And hopefully we'll have another one in the future. So uh be stay tuned to our channel. We thank you for all the uh recent subscribers and we hope that keeps climbing we hope we put out good content if there's any suggestions on anything we can do better guys just let us know and again we appreciate you all thank you for your support we wish you all blessed 2018 and we pray that you take time this year if jesus is not your savior that you'll make time to put him to put him in your life because he trust me guys he's the greatest treasure you'll ever find all right, guys, we appreciate you, and have a blessed day.